Hello and welcome to your weekly briefing for Global Conflict 1. In this video, I'll be covering days 172 to 178, and as usual, doing my best to document the various political changes within that time frame. So the big news this week is that House 2 has gone ahead and declared war preemptively on House 19. Now, according to an insider source in House 2 that I heard from, apparently they received word that it was likely that House 19 was attempting to surprise attack them sometime during the weekend. So this preemptive counterattack, I guess what you would describe it as, is really what has changed in the world of politics this week. Now, one faction from House 15 left and joined House 2, and this was slightly before House 2 actually declared war on House 19, and the faction that I'm talking about here would be Crack Force 1. Now, apparently uh, several of these players in that faction had an issue with House 15 stance, and a couple of their stances are a little bit strange. As you know, they have been resistant to making peace with House 10 for various reasons, but I think I may have encountered a reason why House 15 has been acting as perhaps erratically as they have been. House 15 might be planning on quitting this server within the next couple of months. Now, this might be in anticipation of the mobile launch of the game and likely a corresponding or coinciding new server. So they might be moving on or they might be moving to a different game, but I find it unlikely that they are all quitting due to real life requirements because generally an entire house is not going to quit the server just because of the the time requirements of one player or even even a small group, group of players. So I think the former two are much more likely. So in addition to declaring war on House 19, House 2 also it has been fighting, I believe, House 15 in Europe. Now this is interesting because I've heard that uh, SOS from House 10 is planning on moving to House 2 to concentrate better on House 19. Although, in my opinion, if you're fighting a house, you're fighting a house. So if you attack me and I am in Europe in House 15, that means that you're attacking House 15. It doesn't really matter what geographical location I'm in. I would take that as attack an attack against my house. So, yeah, what I'm hearing is that House 2 is just attacking House 15 in Europe. And though they're leaving House 15 in the Americas alone. However, SOS from House 10 is thinking about joining House 2 because they would like to focus more on House 19. However, they're still going to be fighting House 15 in Europe. Yeah, I'm a bit confused by that, but stranger things have happened, I suppose. But in regards to any potential peace between House 15 and House 10, I think we can safely say that that simply looks out of the question. In addition to this, I've heard that House 15's Marshal, the Vengeful, might actually have a bit of a personal issue with the current House Marshal of House 10. So if House 15 is planning on quitting in a couple of months, it would make sense for them to only fight for personal reasons, really rather than political ones. Uh, obviously, they wouldn't care a whole lot what would happen to the server in the future. And I'm not attempting to poison the well, so to speak, against House 15, but I think based on their behavior in the past couple of months, we can see they have a rather nihilistic approach to how they play the game, in this world at least. And I, I think this might explain the reason for a lot of that. Uh, regardless of how you feel about House 19 taking over a lot of the server. And the fact is there are going to be new worlds that will open up and I feel it's inevitable that we're going to get a second global conflict. It is a very successful world. A lot of players were excited about it and you know it, it's been developed. I don't really see the point in introducing more regional ones when you have the entire world to give people. The question is doesn't need to be so big I suppose. With the launch of the apps for both Android and iOS, I believe Firefly is banking on a large influx of players from those mobile platforms, and only time will tell how long they stick around, because Stronghold Kingdoms is a hardcore game, and your Clash of Clans uh, players are likely not going to find it quite as appealing uh, in that same sense. It is really a, the, a game that is best played on the PC, to be honest. Uh, bigger screens more tactile input. I understand the UI is rather completely redesigned, so hopefully that's not too much of a barrier to entry for players who are you know, first introduced to it on mobile because the design, the current UI for this is quite out of date. Uh, I believe it was designed back probably in 2009, 
So it hasn't aged very gracefully. It doesn't scale too well to high resolution monitors and it's actually limited in resolution. You can only go to, I don't, I don't even think it goes as low as 800 by 600, but that is really neither here nor there. In other news, it looks as if House 4 has joined forces with House 19. I think this is further evidence of a consolidation in the House 15 department. Uh, before, formerly House 4 was a sister house of House 15. And I think they're moving more towards that. You know, the players who are close to House 19 territory, uh, formerly House 15 sister house, have sort of assimilated and just joined the bigger house around them. And that brings us into an interesting conversation to have about House 19. You know, people would say, well, why would you want to ruin the world? I think it is because of a lack of good choices. House 19, they may not be the best choice for the world's long-term, you know, outcome, the long-term enjoyment of it. But from what I hear, a lot of testimonies is that House 19, they generally play honorably. There is limited name calling, you know, trash talking of that sort. And I've pretty much heard that from around the board. Even their enemies will acknowledge that House 19 generally fights honorably in the way they conduct their diplomacy, for example. There aren't a whole lot of broken promises or anything, any of that. So despite the obvious language barrier, because a good deal of the players in House 19 speak Russian, they conduct themselves professionally, I guess you could say. And it has served them well. They, they has ingr ingratiated, I believe that's a word, uh, a lot of sides, a lot of bystanding houses towards their cause. And it's got them to either let them move ahead or those houses have even joined House 19. And that has been one of the things that have really divided the houses united against House 19 is the fact that there are a lot of egos standing in the way. I've mentioned this many times, but, uh, you know, the House Marshal of House 19 and Spartak is really quite a charismatic leader. And to be able to pull off what he has is not an easy feat. So, you know, give credit where credit is due. You may not like how House 19 has dominated this world, but you have to admit a lot of it has been won fairly. Now, I will hear players complain about multi-accounts, and this might be an issue in a country such as Russia where it is more difficult to track down individual IPs given the fact that IPs are in, assigned to entire neighborhoods. I don't believe it is that much of an issue because, as I've detailed before, there is a limited number of things you can invest in the game. You can invest money in the game and you can invest time in the game. Now, when you're investing in multiple accounts, you're investing more time in the game. To build those accounts takes time, and that could be otherwise better applied to other accounts. Those multiple accounts will never be as strong as accounts that are played 24-7 by an actual human, and they will never be as strong as going up against an account that pays a lot of money for it. So I think it reasonably balances out. Now, if we look at it, Russia is not a very rich country. And the, the people who are playing in, from Russia are obviously, they don't have as much money to spend as the people in the West. So I, in my opinion, this can be something of a great equalizer. The people in poorer countries can afford to dedicate more time to, you know, accounts, additional accounts in their areas. And it helps balance the power between them and the countries that are wealthier and can afford to spend a lot more on the game. Now, obviously, this is not sanctioned at all by Firefly, and nor am I encouraging or condoning it. It is simply how I observe the world as it is presented to me. And I'm not expecting you to agree with it, but I think you should consider it, because I see a lot of people complaining about this situation, and I don't believe it is really half as bad as some people make it out to be. An enemy is an enemy regardless of who the account belongs to, okay? Uh, another interesting thing I wanted to point out is the fact that it appears that the code breaker has indeed been banned. Uh, he currently only has one village left. It is in Saudi Arabia, and it currently has 467 days of interdiction on it. Now, I'm not sure if he put that interdiction on it before the account got banned or if other players sort of sent the ID to that village as an act of loyalty, but it re the fact remains that he has been banned, and um, I I'm not exactly sure of the reason behind this, but I heard that he was trying to get money back that he had paid into the system, which brings up another moral question of trying to cheat the system just because you don't believe the system, you know, just because you are buying an infinite resource from the system does not necessarily make it a moral decision to attempt to cheat that system. If I buy 
a Photoshop, for example, that is the right thing to do as opposed to stealing it because somebody needs to pay for the continual development of these of these softwares. And uh, games that are free to play, such as Stronghold Kingdoms, generally rely for funding on what is what are called whales. Now, these are players who invest lots and lots of money into the game, uh, disproportionately so, as opposed to most other players. And they fund, by and large, the development, the continual development and maintenance of the game. You may say uh, that crowns are an infinite resource. However, it costs money for bandwidth and server uptime. These, uh, these are things, if you're trying to rent a server with Amazon AWS, which I believe is where the server for Stronghold Kingdoms is hosted with, that costs a lot of money every month. And if nobody's paying into the system because they think that it is an infinite resource, the game can eventually get shut down. And I don't want to see that happen, and I don't think you do either. So that's why I would strongly encourage people who are thinking this way to maybe instead rethink your outlook on life and why you are spending so much in the first place. If you can clearly not afford to spend as much in the game, Perhaps you sort of have a gambling addiction, and that is something that should be looked into because it can have very negative consequences on the rest of your, of your life. If you have a gambling addiction, it doesn't matter. You lucked out in this case, but next time when you go to a lottery or you go to a casino, you're not going to be able to pull the money back most likely. So you're, going to, you're only delaying an inevitable confrontation with this potential addiction. So I would encourage people to step back, and especially if you know somebody who appears to have this problem, do not encourage them because it is unhealthy to attempt to cheat the system all the time. You're eventually going to fail at it. And if, you're, if you've come to rely on cheating it to you know, make ends meet, that could be very detrimental for your overall future. Now, as I understand it from the bits of gossip that I've heard throughout the game is that uh, the code is actually a fairly well-off or well-to-do player and obviously will not be suffering too much from this loss of income if they were a compulsive gambler. So, you know, the situation might not apply to them, but I want it to be taken broadly as advice. Another issue that I would like to briefly touch on is the issue of doxing. Now, it seems to come up more and more, and I see it, unfortunately, in the forums where players are being called by their real names. Now, when you sign up for Stronghold Kingdoms, you're given the option. You can sign up under your real name if you want to do that. However, most players sign up under a pseudonym, and this is to protect their confidentiality. This is to protect their real-world identity uh, from various forms of harassment that can be delivered over the internet. Now, I would encourage everybody to respect those individuals' right to privacy. Now, if they have decided to make themselves known, I know a player who does go by his real world name and feels it is the right thing to do and that is definitely his prerogative however some players do not choose to do it this way so respect their privacy do not dig up their details from their facebook and try to post it all over the game in an attempt to get them removed from the game because that's generally what's going on here it is a it's a form of coercion say you know whoever is doxing another player says Look, I know all of your details right here. It doesn't matter if it's public or private. The fact is that the player entered this game and did not reveal that information. You went and dug that information up using personal connections. This is not information that is readily, readily available for anybody else playing the game. You have to know this person on a personal level to find various uh, fonts of, or various collections of their information online even if it is publicly available. I mean, my address is publicly available, but you don't know what it is in the game because I haven't chose to disclose that to you. However, people who know me would also know my address. And it doesn't, it doesn't do any good. Generally, all that's done, all, that, all that's accomplished through doxing people is potentially threatening their lives because if some maladjusted person decides to actually call SWAT on them, that can be a very dangerous situation for all involved. And people can get shot. And that can also land whoever did the prank calling in jail. So I would encourage you to act civilly. And I wish the this bout of immaturity that that I've most recently seen on Global Conflict 1, I really haven't seen this before to this extent, but I'm sure it has happened. I think it's only because now I'm a little bit more aware of what's going on in the upper echelon of the leadership of these houses. But then again, this is the first time I've ever seen it escalate this far on the public forums. So I, I want to issue a call to action 
to everybody who sees people in, who engage in these these behaviors. Discourage them. Do not enable them to continue doing so. It is really quite simple. All you have to do is deny them a platform. I know there is a an ethical question involved when you try to deplatform somebody, but remember, they're not entitled to use your platform. If they want to go out and get a platform, that's their prerogative. However, you own a private platform and you have and they have no right to use it if you don't want to let them. Uh, so I think that pretty much covers that problem. So here we go. Let's take a look at the oh, let's take a look at the house points this week. I'm just going to give you a brief rundown here. So for those of who those of you who are interested in seeing this stuff and collecting it and comparing, contrasting week to week, there you go. You got all the numbers now. Excellent. Don't have time to do tons of little things. Okay, I'm going to run down the House 19 Alliance next. I think it's important because, as I mentioned, they have added some houses to it. So in the House 19 Alliance, we have House 19, House 4, House 5, House 6, House 8, House 13. House 15 is not, but, you know, they're quite friendly towards House 19. And I'm pretty sure House 20 is also part of the Alliance, but they might not be. As you might recall, last week they were... Uh, their House 9 had removed House 20 from the Alliance. I'm not sure who took that over, but I strongly suspect that it is that they are inclined or friendly towards House 19, if not actually uh, a sister house of House 19. So lastly, we have the country and county changes. Starting off with country changes, we have Colombia flipping from neutral to House 15. Spain, interestingly enough, flipped from House 19 to House 2. Italy flipped from House 15 to House 2. And Russia flipped from House 5 to House 19. Now, it should be noted when it comes to Russia, that's actually a friendly flip because House 5 is a sister house of House 19. But I think now House 19 is really going for the gold. Uh, obviously, after the end of this most recent round, in which House 19 won, I think they're really pushing for more glory. So obviously they will be taking over as many as many profitable country uh, capitals as possible. Moving down to a county and province level, Southampton Island has flipped from House 19 to House 9. Ecuador flipped from House 10 to House 15. North Argentina flipped from House 15 to House 10. Mali flipped from House 19 to House 11. Cameroon has flipped from House 11 to House 19. Oriental, I hope that's the name of it, flips from House 5 to House 11. Zambia flips from House 10 to House 19. Zimbabwe flipped from House 11 to House 19. Eastern Cape flipped from House 10 to House 19. Somalia flipped from House 19 to House 11. South Sudan flipped from House 19 to House 11. West Saudi Arabia flipped from House 1 to House 10. East Turkey flipped from House 15 to House 2. Northeast Iran flipped from House 11 to House 19. Southeast Iran flipped from House 11 to House 19. Pakistan flipped from House 4 to House 19. As I mentioned, House 4, I strongly suspect, has joined House 19. According to my sources, that's the case. And I think all evidence, all visual evidence here on the map points towards it. Kashmir has been playing with me again. And once again, this week has changed colors this time flipping from 4 to 10. So, you know, we can count on that. That is something that I look forward to every week is the weekly flipping of Kashmir. So they get mentioned every week. And lastly, some gain made by House 11. Uh, West Kazakhstan has flipped from House 19 to House 11. So some territory lost by House 11, some territory gained. And I believe that pretty much covers everything for this week. As always, if you think you have any information that would uh, contribute to this report, do feel free to get in contact with me in game. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next week.